I'm going to ask Amy to come on up and join me. We're going to open with our prayer this morning. Bow with us, if you would, please. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. And we thank you for the sunshine that's outside, uh, the warmer weather that we've had. And we just thank you for the blessings in life that you bestow upon us. Thank you for the Good Shepherd Worship Center, Father. It's this last Sunday. Uh, we have our final warm-up, so to speak. Uh, we just pray that uh, somebody will hear this sermon, this lesson, this talk, and uh, it will mean something in their life in a life-changing way. Thank you for my wife who's here by my side. And Father, help us as we move forward this week to putting the finishing touches on our opening service. Not the finishing touches on, on anything specific, but being ready for next Sunday. That you would give us the strength, the wisdom, and the knowledge uh, to know what to do. I pray this in Jesus' name. Well, this morning we're going to do things a little different. We've talked in the past about being a little bit outside the box and trying not to um, lock ourselves into a specific order of service and, and go with the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I thought I would share with you this morning some, some thoughts that I had uh, about getting ready for next Sunday, uh, some things that... Uh, it's kind of going to be an interactive uh, Let's Go to Church podcast today and live stream. Uh, we've got some, uh, I won't call them issues because we're working our way through them, but we've got some sound and projection uh, problems that at this point we've not gotten figured out. And next Sunday is getting really close. And we've had a little bit of help with that. Uh, we're getting closer. We just, uh, uh, we're not there. So first of all, I'd like to ask you to pray for us that, that we get that taken care of. And that we are able to be ready for next Sunday with those things. Especially the audio. Uh, those that part is going to be big in what we do. Uh, at this point, we still don't have a worship leader, and so our music is going to have to come off of audio, and that's a big deal for us. So we, we really need that one lifted up in, in prayer. And if you're listening to this, and you have knowledge in, in audio, visual, things like that, uh, contact me. And somebody knows exactly what we need. And whether it be a piece of equipment that we're, we're short, uh, whether it's following some line that goes along the edge of the church building and up into the speaker systems and, and the projection area, uh, somebody knows that out there. And we would love to have you bless us to help in turn turn around and bless others with uh, a wonderful experience with sound and audio and visual and, and things like that. Also, being that we're kind of a dual purpose here in that we'll have people in the sanctuary, but we're also going to be live streaming the service as well. Uh, we'd like interaction from those that we... that participate with us on live stream. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. I say this on a regular basis, but the email address to reach me, ed at edboston.com. That's pretty simple. Ed at edboston.com. And we'd like to know some things like uh, what kind of music do you like to hear? Do you like Amazing Grace, the old version, or do you like Amazing Grace, 
our chains are gone. My chains are gone. The, the newer version. Do you like, uh, well, just whatever genre. And that's not saying that we're going to, uh, if one person sends in a, a request, that we're going to grant every request. But uh, we'd like to, we'd like to help you enjoy the the service at home, the same as those that are going to fill these pews and enjoy the service as well. Um, I tell you what, I've got some uh, some books and some DVDs uh, from places that. Uh, I've interviewed through my podcast that they, they sent out as as gifts, and, and if the first three people that would have some kind of interaction with us uh, via email, ed at edboston.com, or go to our Facebook page uh, and, and have some interaction there, uh, and make sure you let us know when you do that that you heard this on uh, the Let's Go to Church podcast. Um, I'll send you a gift, either a DVD or a book that uh, will be a blessing to you. So would love to have you uh, be a part of that. Uh, in the past few Sundays, I've sat and I've read uh, some music to you, and I'm not going to do that today. So see, surprise, surprise. We're going to wait till next Sunday and... I'm praying and believing that we will have the audio done so that we can all participate in, in the song service next Sunday here at Good Shepherd Worship Center. Uh, pray that um, we're making some plans for the future. We've got uh, uh, some negotiations going on to bring in our first well-known uh, singer and we're praying about that uh, hoping that that works out uh, we pass that we pray that I'm the person that I need to be to be able to book <coughs> and schedule these kinds of things that's kind of out of my my comfort zone, but that's okay. I don't mind getting out of my comfort zone a little bit. And, I, well, the main reason is, is I've got a good mentor for that. And I've also got lots of good contacts in the, the PR industry. And so, uh, pray that we'll be able to bring some wonderful uh, Christian concerts right here in the Good Shepherd Worship Center. And that's one of the reasons we call it a worship center. We're not just a, a Sunday morning uh, 10 o'clock service, because actually, uh, if I had a watch on, it would say 210. Oh, how did I know that? I don't have a clock in here. I have a wonderful wife sitting in the front row who <laughs> whispered it to me. So... Um, we're, again, we, we try to think outside the box a little bit. And I told somebody this week, that doesn't mean we're crazy. That doesn't mean we're going all out and, and doing things uh, in, in ways that some people would consider um, just way far out there too far. Uh, it just means that we're, we're not going to be your traditional come in, uh, have an opening prayer, sing three songs, uh, take an offering, uh, have a sermon, have a closing course, and say goodbye. It's not always going to work that way. It may work that way on occasion, except for the offering. We're not going to pass the offering plate during the service. We're going to allow people to uh, give of their offerings as they leave the service. And uh, we don't want people to feel intimidated. And uh, 
we want people to feel like this is a safe place that they can come and, and feel the love of Jesus Christ and not feel like they're being judged or a come as you are uh, dress code. Uh, if you want to wear a three piece suit, that's okay. If you want to wear jeans and, and a t shirt, that's okay too. So we are working hard to be inclusive. We just need your prayers, your assistance in, in cases. And I'll post up on uh, our Facebook page this week some things that we still need. Uh, some of them may be more critical than others. Some things we would like to have. Uh, we, we've got some flowers to put up here on the stage before next Sunday. Uh, so we might, you know, we might like to have some other stage decorations as well. So I just wanted to open up my heart to you this morning before we get started and tell you the needs that we have, the places that we want to go, uh, interaction between us. I would really love to give away three of those DVDs and books that I have in my office uh, because we heard from you through this podcast and through this live stream this morning. The text for this morning's ser sermon is <coughs> part four of a, how, how am I going to say this? Part four of a five-part series that we're going to do in four Sundays. Hmm. How does that work? Well, week one we did chapter one of First John. Week two we did chapter two. And week three we did chapter three. Now, if you know anything about First John, there are five chapters. So today we get to do chapters four and five. And that's a lot of reading. And I'm not going to read it all to you today. Uh... I'm going to ask you to uh, do some homework and, and read part of the text on your own. Uh, I'm going to read certain parts, but we're going to talk about the parts that we skip, skip over. So, I decided against making the fifth part of the series the first Sunday of the actual uh, in the building worship service and so come back next Sunday if you don't get us live check us out on our archives either through the live stream app uh, uh, through Spreaker uh, on our, our podcast app and I really, really, really believe that you're going to be blessed next Sunday. Uh, I know I'm already feeling blessed. And I'm not feeling too stressed at this point in time. We've still got a week to be stressed. But uh, we have a great big God who led us to this place. And he's not going to lead us to this place just to have us fail. Now, if we fail... That'll be on us. It won't be on God because God is going to provide a way and He always does. In the book of 1 John, or chapter 4, we talk about starting at verse 7, God's love and ours. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is, this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice of our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love
love one another. God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. We know that we live in Him and He in us because He has given us the Spirit, given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in Him, and He in God. And so we know and we rely on the love that God has for us. God is love. Whoever loves lives in love lives in God and God in Him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like Him. We, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because He first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. I love God, yet he hates his brother, he is a liar. I probably ought to read that one more time. If you say, I love God, yet hates your brother, you are a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us his, this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. And in his concluding remarks in chapter 5, starting at verse 13, John writes this. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Man, what a, what a refreshing verse that is. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He, will, he hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin and does not that does not lead to death, he should pray and God give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that we should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God, and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. And may God grant his blessings upon the reading of the word. Discerning false prophets. We skipped over that a little bit. We, we went ahead. Um, we already talked about the the Antichrist, and that he would be here. <coughs> and it mentions that in, in those scriptures that we skipped over. All messages acknowledging that, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is a scriptural claim that you can put your, your money on, so to speak. You can believe that when, when there's claims being made that Jesus came to this earth he was born of a virgin. He walked the earth, and for 33 years he was here. He was perfect. He, he died. He was raised from the dead. And then he went to be at the right hand of the Father. If you believe that, that is of God. However, all
all messages that are not of God are satanic claims, and those who tell you that the Jesus is just a, a fiction, or that Jesus was just a, a, a good man, or Jesus was just a prophet, those are from Satan. <coughs> and I could go into a list of things and a list of groups that will teach that to you, that Jesus was. Most of them will acknowledge that Jesus existed, but they don't acknowledge that he was of God. Love the saints. Our love for God is proven by our love for one another, and we read that earlier. God said, love one another. Love God. If we love God, we're going to love our brothers and sisters, because God loves our brothers and sisters. God is a God of love. Granted, there are times when God shows his wrath against those who, who don't show his love. But God is a God of love. And he wants us to love one another. Just like Jesus loved when he was here. You think about who did Jesus love and show his love to. And he showed his love to everyone. From the lowest of the low to the highest of the high. Jesus loved them. And you might think, well, Jesus wasn't too kind to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But you know what? Think about your parents. They probably loved you more than anyone. And they weren't always nice about their love. Tough love. They punished you because they wanted the best for you and they wanted you to do what was right. And I think that's why Jesus was so hard on the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That he, he wanted them to understand <laughs> Not just to criticize. That wasn't Jesus' personality to just criticize. But he wanted them to turn from the ways that they were going and follow his message of love one another. Not love the old law and tradition. God's love for us was proven by the sacrificial death of Christ Jesus. You see, if there was a way that we could have been saved without Jesus dying, I don't believe that Jesus would have came to this earth in order to die. That's an opinion, okay? However, we know that Jesus, that God loved us Enough to send Jesus because there was no other sacrifice good enough. The sacrifice of God's only Son. All the way up to the point where there was a separation, a brief separation between God and Jesus. It was something Jesus never knew anything about up until that point. And I think that was probably the hardest part of the entire crucifixion story, was that separation. And as we move forward here into the last part of February and then through March, we'll be talking quite a bit because we are in the season of Lent. What does love produce? Well, the scriptures that we read said it produces God is joined to us. We are, we are joined to him. And that puts a smile on my face. God is joined to us and we are joined to him. That should put a smile on your face too. You can be joined to the God of the universe who created all things good. That's what that love produces. We can have confidence and we can be protected from fear. 
you know, you look, today is Super Bowl Sunday. And I was watching earlier some interviews, and there's a fine line between confidence and cockiness. And it's good to have confidence. It's good to know that there is faith in your own ability. But also knowing that you're human and that you make mistakes. So we can have that confidence and be protected from fear. Now, we skipped over the first few verses in chapter 5. John talks about a test, a testimony, and two transgressions in that part. The question, how do I know I'm born of God? The answers are, a saved person believes Jesus is the Christ. The saved person loves and obeys God. The saved person has his prayers answered. And the saved person does not live in continuous sin. We can know. We don't have to have the fear of, of not knowing where we stand. And that's how we do it. Let me read those, th those four again. Saved person, one, believes Jesus is the Christ. Two, loves and obeys God. Three, has his prayers answered. And four, does not live in continuous sin. <coughs> Excuse me. Regarding the Son of God, Jesus is the second person in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Regarding the saints of God, we have eternal life. In who? In Jesus Christ. We have eternal life because of Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, and through Jesus Christ. We must believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and it, it kind of goes over this uh, a couple of times, and it tells me that John wants to emphasize this, this important part. Again, many people believe that Jesus was a good man, but we have to believe more than that. We have to believe that Jesus was the Son of God. If we don't believe that, nothing else matters. Because anything less than the Son of God could not be a, a, a sacrifice for our sins. Could not be an atonement for what we need to be atoned. And so Jesus is the Son of God. Finally, in the last portion, John gives direction on how a believer should pray for another believer who has committed one of these transgressions. A, trans a transgression that does not lead to death, prayer should be made. A transgression that leads to death is not something that we have to pray for. John finishes out with avoiding idols. You see, we have a jealous God. We have a jealous God who was so wonderful that he sent his son Jesus to this earth. And while we're preaching today on God's love, Again, God is a jealous God. He doesn't want to share us with whatever else in life that comes before Him. I'm not saying that we can't do other things. I'm not saying that today you can't watch the Super Bowl. But I've, I've been reading a lot of, of funny things on Facebook. And, and are they really funny? What, what if we showed as much enthusiasm and spirit for God as we do the Denver Broncos and the Carolina Panthers? What if 
we were as excited about coming to church today as we're excited about what happens at six something tonight when they have opening kickoff. What happens if we were as excited about spreading the good news to the whole world as we are about what commercials are going to be the good commercials in the Super Bowl tonight and which ones flop? You see where I'm coming from? It's priorities, and it doesn't mean that we can't enjoy some of these other things in life that, that are okay. But God is a jealous God, and if we put that Super Bowl up there ahead of Him, that's not going to make Him happy. Did you have time for God today? If you're watching this, I... If you're watching this live, then yes, you did. If you're watching it in archive down the road past the Super Bowl, I don't know. Did you have time for God on Super Bowl Sunday? He had time for you. He had the time to send His Son, Jesus, to die so that we could spend eternity in heaven. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this series that we've gone through in the book of 1 John. Thank you for John's teachings in today about the love of God and how we can be in God and be confident in our relationship and know that we're saved. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share the good news. And, Father, for those who are listening that already know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you would help them to be bold on sharing the good news. I pray that you would help them to not have any fear and to boldly proclaim that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and He is our Lord and our Savior. And for those that may be listening, whether it be live right as I'm praying right now, or maybe it's in archive days or weeks, months, or even possibly years down the road, I pray that if they don't know Jesus as their Savior, that they would decide that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Father, bless what we're about to do. Convict anyone, Father, who, who needs to know you and give them that knot in their stomach or, or that nudge that they need to decide that today they're going to give their life to you. We pray this in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. We never want to pass up an opportunity to let people know <coughs> that God loves you so much that he wants you to be with him in heaven. Isn't that amazing? You know, you, you talk about people on earth who, who love you and they want to spend time with you or they want to uh, go places with you. They want to invite you into their home or you invite them into their home. God wants you to spend all of eternity with Him. In order to do that, the Bible is pretty specific. You have to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. I'm going to give you a chance to say some words here in a minute. And, and the words mean nothing if you're not sincere about what it is you're saying. They're just words. They won't save you. They won't put you on the right course. They won't do anything other than just be empty words. And I think we all know people who are really good at passing on empty words. But if you truly believe that you want a relationship with with Christ, 
that you want to spend eternity in heaven with God, I want you to repeat these words. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me, Father, for the sins that I have committed. Help me to turn my life around in true repentance and give my life to you through Jesus, in whose name we pray. If you prayed that prayer and were sincere, you have just taken the first step toward living with God in eternity. Wow. That, that puts cold chills. If you did that, the Bible says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They're rejoicing for you. Let me tell you some things you need to do. I told you you need to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. You need to be baptized. You just repented. You need to be baptized. If you have an issue with uh, how to get that done, again, my email, ed at edboston.com. I'll help you find somebody that can do that. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. If you go to a website called BibleGateway.com, you can go and it <laughs> even reads it to you. I was listening to my two chapters worth of, worth of Scripture this morning before we got ready to, to come in here. I, wanted to, I just wanted to hear those words. If you like reading yourself, you can read yourself. Spend time with God in prayer. I know some people think, well, how in the world do you pray? Well, you can talk. You can think. You can pray silently. You can pray out loud. You just talk to God like you'd talk to your wife or your, your husband or your, your children. Well, maybe you, know, you shouldn't, you know, pray to God that uh, uh, if they don't eat their green vegetables that they got to sit at the table all night, you know. But just talk to God. Talk to God. And if there's ever anything that we can do for you here at the Good Shepherd Worship Center, boy, I about messed that one up today. I've been on a roll and getting it good, but I got it right, I just stumble on. If there's anything we can do for you, please don't be afraid to let us know. We love you and we are glad that you are with us today. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for the love that you have for us. The love that John shared in his book that we were reading today. We've, we read that if you we love you that you are in us and we are in you because your love is always there. So help us, Father, to love you more each and every day. Bless the word that was re read today and was talked about today. And we just thank you for all that you do in our lives. We pray this all in the holy and precious name of Jesus. Now go out and do the right thing.